catchy phrase, but was it empty? The latest front in the GOP war on women is happening in the grocery aisles. The Republicans in Wisconsin are ramping up the war on women. The war on women alive and well. How do you read it? Do you think that there is something of a war on women among Republicans? I think we have to fix that. Republicans are being accused of waging a war on women for something they're doing that is very different than what the Democrats are doing. Republicans swear there's no such thing as a war on women. All out war that your party is waging on women. It's a war on your parts is what it is. Well, we're not doing a show investigating the typical sex inequalities. We're going to be a little more contrarian today and throw a few grenades. Is there a war on men? Let's ask our dapper party panel. It's lawyer and feminist writer Jill Filopovic and Gavin McInnes, contributor at tackymag.com. All right, so Gavin, you've written a lot about this controversy and yes. unpopular topics, so I'm going to start with you. Okay. Are men being discriminated against? Yes, clearly. I mean, the data shows it from danger in the workplace to alimony payments to all these perpetual myths that, like, women make less money than men. And we accept it because we can take it on the chin. We're very nice guys. But I'm getting sick of it. I'm getting sick of the way we're portrayed in sitcoms. I'm getting sick of the way fatherhood is trivialized and single motherhood is put on a pedestal because it's bad for America. And I used to think women were too stupid to understand this, but oh let's <laughs> oh treat them like grown-ups and say sexism in 2014 is a myth, and uh, we're going to have to get back to what matters, and what matters is fatherhood. Okay, so you're saying that alimony is totally skewed because men end up paying more of it, although women earn a lot more money now than when the laws and the rules were kind of set in place. Forty percent of women are breadwinners in America, in American households. Ninety percent of the alimony payments are by men to women. Yeah. The numbers don't add up, and women should be able to do the same math that men can do. Uh, <laughs> no? Jill? Um, I think your math is bad. Uh, women are 40% of breadwinners in American households because of so many single mothers. Um, you have a lot of women that were never married in the first place when they have children. So they yeah, and they choose anyone. that lifestyle, and that's child abuse. Well, they don't have anyone to pay those alimony payments to. What? Alimony payments are gender neutral. There are plenty of women pay alimony payments to husbands. No. Um, and same with child support payments. No. Madonna plenty lost women... $76 million on her failed marriage yeah. to Guy Ritchie. She's not your typical women. broad. Look, the alimony concept was invented when it was the known of cooking a spaghetti the whole life, and then she gets a band, she goes, I made spaghetti for you guys my whole life, and now you live... I don't know how the skills, uh, but now that women are working in the real world... <laughs> I didn't realize that's what it was. I'm so glad <laughs> yes. you... I didn't realize alimony was invented, in it was invented in Italy. It was invented for... It was called alimony. It was invented for old-fashioned moms. We got new moms. You want equality? You don't get alimony. Sorry. I think it's important to distinguish um, between facial, the kind of equality that you're talking about, which is you're basically saying that women shouldn't have you know, money to provide for their children. Men shouldn't have to pay money to provide for their children. When men actually petition for child, or um, I'm sorry, for custody of their children, they're very likely to get it. What? That's actually not true. That actually is That true. is total when men actually request custody of their children, they almost always get at least joint custody. Men it's always that, lose a custody big battles. Difference between there's they a get huge... it and they almost always get joint custody. I mean, there's a very big difference. There's a well, massive actually, bias it's against actually, men it's, it's, on it's custody quite, battles. It's, it's rare in contentious divorce proceedings yeah. where both parties are advocating for sole custody of the children. Most people that get divorced do actually come up with child uh, support settlements and child care agreements yeah. that both parties can agree on. Do you agree um, with Gavin really about, about fatherhood? That fatherhood is the, the missing link in society and if there were more dads, I don't know, kids would be better off? Yeah, I think fatherhood is a missing link, yes. I, I do actually agree that we do need to talk about things like workplace injuries and deaths among men, that we do need to talk about the fact that men are much more likely to commit suicide and succeed than women, that we have a mental health care crisis among men, that men in America and around the world do suffer. Um, but I think a lot of that suffering comes out of traditional gender roles and these expectations that men act tough, that they don't display emotion, and that they don't seek help. And I think that's also why we have a fatherhood crisis. Um, I think all I, of these issues matter. I think those are two different things. I think, things it's, I think, I think it's feminists who are coming up with first point, we're actually coming, coming out of that, and we've rounded the bend on, on things like mental health. Feminists see single motherhood and they go, sisters are doing it for themselves. 
and sisters are abusing their children. If you have children knowingly as a single mom, you're your starting a child married? out with a disadvantage. Did, you, did your parents stay married? Yes. They okay, did. Well, I, I, well, sometimes marriage doesn't work out, Gavin. Some, sometimes and marriage doesn't, doesn't work you, out. It doesn't make you a child abuser. And it does sometimes. if you it, choose that. If you well, choose to be a single mom, which is the majority of that, single moms. Gavin, that's, I think that's, that's a weird claim. Sometimes marriage doesn't work out, and sometimes dad is a jerk. He's just an let's awful person. Let's talk numbers. And you actually don't want him in the household. How many but times? Let's, but let's, let's, let's get back to some of this, this, these outcome disparities that the conversation seems to revolve around. Because I think it's wrong for us, and I've, I've done this before with race stuff, I think it's wrong for us to focus on the disparity and not focus on exactly exactly what the phenomenon is and just accept the fact that sometimes there are outcomes and the outcomes happen to be desperate among men and women and there isn't some sort of uh, conspiracy being perpetrated against anyone. You said that sexism is dead. I would agree. It's probably dead and perhaps there are some uh, social values that are, that are producing some, some intention, some, uh, some not, not intentional or deliberate uh, consequences, but are perhaps uh, producing some things that we, uh, we don't necessarily intend. It may well be intentional. Outcomes. There's evidence that the and, and CIA funded you can do about it from a magazine. policy standpoint um, <laughs> at all. True. It's actually true. Okay, that's sure. I, it's still it sounds really funny coming. We from reward Gavin. single moms with welfare payments. Okay, but let me we reward let me, destroyed okay, families. Hold on I would just love a second. To see you survive off of welfare payments. It's not like women are living high on the hog with their you know three hundred dollars a month to pay care for their children. It's not three hundred dollars a month. Uh, welfare with food stamps and more than three kids is more like twelve hundred dollars a month. Okay. So, Jill, let me ask you this. Is sexism dead? No. Sexism is not dead. Sexism is alive and well. Um, if you look at you know, the statistics, even among American women, which I know one of Gavin's talking points is that, you know, if you want to find sexism, you have to go abroad, and American women are just fine. Um, American women do make less money. Yes, the gender gap has been pretty much, um, not entirely erased, but it's been very much condensed among young single women without children. But as soon as no, you they bring... make more money, young single women without children, that's that's more money than men. That's what she's saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that's they make more saying. money. Um, <laughs> How do you argue with someone who just keeps making up figures? I'm not making up figures. Where Single women with without kids so, so make are, more money than men. Figures? Like, which figure do we trust? Because the president has been talking about 77 cents, uh, that women make 77 cents on the dollar for every man. What, what are the figures? And what is, just debunked a lot and of that. Can and we it, actually it's accept? not just maternity. It's also men are more willing to do things like ask for a raise. And men are more willing to work in more difficult jobs that, that pay them a greater salary. You know, it, it's not as cut and dried as, and by the way, Gavin brought up a really good point. If employers thought they could get away with paying people 77 cents on the dollar, all major companies would only hire women. They do it with I, illegal aliens already. I wish that was true. Right, I mean, there's another a, show, Gavin. <laughs> there was a really interesting study that was done, I think, two or three years ago, where they had. Uh, they were looking at resumes of people applying for jobs as lab assistants and these resumes were identical in terms of work experience and education and all they did was change the name on the resumes from male to female and what they found is that the male named resumes were accepted and offered higher salaries overwhelmingly versus the female named resumes and the only difference here is the name so I do think that there are some deep-seated sexist ideas within American society nobody's going out and saying I don't want to hire a woman yeah what they're doing is they're reading a male name and they're inferring into that a level of competence. It's called sure. post judice. That's, that's They've the seen these males stay up all night. No, I'll it's the definition okay. of post judice. They've noticed a pattern and they said, gee, my male employees tend to stay here all night, whereas my female employees tend to prefer to go to their daughter's ballet recital. I think I'm going to err on the side of my experience, which tends to be I'm more profitable when I hire men. Okay, okay so Jill, if, if sexism alive, is there sexism against men? Um, I, I do think that there is, I don't want to compare the discrimination that men face and the challenges that men face to the long-standing institutionalized oppression that women have faced for centuries. Okay. Um, I think those are two different things. That doesn't mean, though, that men don't face very serious challenges, many of which I do think stem from these traditional ideas about gender and who should be doing what. Um, I think sexism hurts men and women alike. All right, well, uh, Jill and Gavin, we're going to have you guys back to talk about something really uplifting and fun. They're going to be talking about divorce a little later in the show, <laughs> and that's going to be great. It's going to be so calm and wonderful. All right, thank you both. Uh, we're going to see them in just a few minutes. From men to boys, if you have a son, you might agree with our next guest, the war on pint-sized men. Is it on? Stay with us. It's The Independence. It continues in moments. <laughs>